Robin Gill. Good evening and thank you for joining us. The crisis in Ukraine is quickly approaching a boiling point not seen since the days of the Cold War. Many Western countries, including Canada, are calling for Russia's immediate withdrawal from Ukrainian territory in Crimea. Russia, which already had a large naval base and thousands of troops in Crimea, has effectively taken control of the region without firing a shot. And tonight, many Ukrainians believe the Russians have issued an ultimatum demanding they surrender Crimea or face a violent attack. We have extensive coverage beginning with our senior political correspondent, Tom Clark. Tom? Thank you, Robin, and good evening from Maidan Square in Kiev, where the mood here tonight is one of anger, defiance, and fear. This is a place where rumors run rampant, but tonight the news of the Russian ultimatum has trumped them all and has kicked the diplomatic effort to avoid war into high gear. More than any other world leader, Barack Obama faces the toughest test in this crisis. He is setting the tone and the strategy for the pushback. He spoke late today in Washington. Over time, this will be a costly proposition for Russia. And uh, now's the time for them to consider whether they can serve their interests in a way that um, uh, resorts to diplomacy uh, as opposed to force. Here in Kiev, Britain's foreign minister, William Hague, came to the square today promising resolve, but little else. If Russia cannot be persuaded to respect the sovereignty and territorial integrity of Ukraine, there will have to be other consequences. Ukraine's interim prime minister was more blunt. Crimea is the territory of Ukraine. And despite the presence of Russian military, Despite the fact that Russian military supports an illegal government, we will tackle this problem. Tonight, American Secretary of State John Kerry is here in Kiev to show support to Ukraine and defiance to Russia. That defiance so far being threats to isolate Moscow from the community of nations. In New York this afternoon, an emergency meeting of the United Nations Security Council called by Russia. And today, more harsh words from the Canadian government. President Putin's actions have put his country on a course of diplomatic and economic isolation that could well see Russia exit the G8 entirely. What these world leaders know, what these people know, is that time is literally running out and the stakes couldn't be higher. This is the potential to become a full-fledged war in the heart of Europe. Nothing has been more serious than that since the Balkans erupted in violence in the early 1990s. And if there is war, ground zero will be the Crimean Peninsula, where tonight we find Global's Paul Johnson. Paul? Russia today has been in the process of consolidating its hold over the Crimean Peninsula. They've taken control of the roads that go to the mainland. Today, they took over a ferry service that runs between Ukraine and Russia. And a lot of the action and tension today has been outside of a small number of bases where you still have forces that are loyal to the government in Kiev. Heavily armed, these pro-Moscow forces well outnumber the Ukrainian military personnel here who've been holed up in their base now for days. So here we have one of the more remarkable and strange sites of this crisis so far. Just behind me here are some members of the Ukrainian military. They don't appear to have given up their position here inside their base. But just a few feet away, look who we have here. We've got these men here. Their uniforms don't have any insignias. We can only presume that they are part of the pro-Moscow forces, possibly even actual Russian military forces. They're not answering any questions. So far, there hasn't been any violence associated with this standoff. But the bigger question is when and how are they going to resolve this? How long will they stay? We ask the Ukrainians. They're not answering nor are the volunteer militiamen blocking another entrance to the base. Just asking a question. Go. They tell us to go away. But people are not so silent in Semforopol's Lenin Square. Show up with a microphone and you'll soon see a crowd of pro-Russian Ukrainians eager to explain their side of things, that they feel threatened by the new government in Kiev 
and they welcome soldiers from the country they identify with most. I'm not scared by the Russian soldier, says this man. We're happy they're here. There is no violence. We're a quiet and peaceful region, she says. But we've seen on TV what happened, and we're scared for the future of our children. You can see that down here in the Crimean Peninsula, there's a huge difference in perception of the situation than what you find up in Kiev. One of the chief grievances that the Russian-speaking population has down here was a law that was passed early after the changeover in government up in Kiev, where they tried to ban Russian as an official language. For people down here, they take that as an attack on their heritage and their culture, and they were worried that this was a sign of things to come. Back to you. Okay, thanks, Paul. Well, this crisis is now playing out by the minute and by the hour, and as the people here wait, they tell their stories and they sing their songs. In Maidan Square, it's the faces that tell the story tonight. Having risen up to overthrow a corrupt regime, having lost 87 men and women in that struggle, they now face the threat of invasion and war, and yet, they're not leaving. And before the sun rises, the people here may have a clearer idea of what the future holds, for better or for worse. I'm Tom Clark in Kiev. Now back to Robin Gill at the Global National Anchor Desk. Robin? All right, thanks very much, Tom.